All right, welcome again. This is part five of the differentiation um, rule series. And for this particular portion, we're going to be taking derivatives of our basic trigonometric functions. So um, that includes sine, cosine, tangent, as well as cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Um, we will be reserving the inverse trig functions and hyperbolics for um, later on, but for right now, we're going to just focus with the uh, focus on the basic six trigonometric functions. So to start off, here we see that the derivative of the sine function is just the cosine function, and the derivative of the cosine function is just minus sine. And then coming here, if we take the derivative of tangent, we end up getting secant squared. And the way that we end up getting tangent, uh, the derivative of tangent is we can take the derivative of its equivalent, which is sine divided by cosine, and do the quotient rule for that. And that will end up giving us secant squared, x. So here for cosecant squared, x, if we take the derivative of that, we end up getting negative cosecant x times cotangent x. Okay, and, and once again, we know that cosecant is just 1 over sine x. So if we did the um, quotient rule to 1 divided by sine x, then we would end up getting this as an answer. Similarly, for secant x, if we take the derivative of that, we end up getting secant x times tangent x. And so if we took 1 divided by cosine x and did the quotient rule for that for its derivative, we would see that we get the answer for this. And of course, if we do cotangent x, take the derivative of that, um, we get negative cosecant squared x. And again, cotangent we know is cosine divided by sine. And if we did the quotient rule to that, we would end up getting negative cosecant squared x as an answer. So um, pretty straightforward. So now we're just going to use these to find derivatives of these following problems. And so for the first one here, um, we have our function, which is 2 cosecant x plus 5 cosine x. And so we want to take the derivative of that. So, of course, our constant, we just leave out. And, of course, for cosecant, we see that our derivative for cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x. So, here, negative cosecant x times cotangent x plus 5 is our constant. And so now the derivative of cosine is what? Negative sine x. And so from here, all we have to do is clean up everything. And at this point, we're good. So this will be a minus 2 cosecant x cotangent x minus 5 sine x, okay? And for here, there's um, not too much more we can do with this, so we'll just leave it this way. Okay? So for our next problem, you notice here we have one function being divided by another function. So we're going to employ the, the quotient rule here to be able to take the derivative of this function. So, and doing the quotient rule, remember that it is low d high minus high d low over low squared. Okay? So, in doing that, low d high minus high d low all over low quantity squared. Okay? So now that we have this, we'll just do exactly what the quotient rule has said. So we write these two terms 
The derivative of one is zero. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. And of course, we know that we can do that because back when we first started this series, we know that if we have the sum of two functions here, um, that we can just take the derivative of each of them, add up the answers. Minus 1 plus sine x. And so now we're going to take the derivative of x plus cosine x. So the derivative of x is just 1. Derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. And all that over x plus cosine x, quantity squared. Okay. So now at this point, we're going to start combining like terms and um, cleaning stuff up here. So of course, um, 0 plus cosine x is just cosine x. And so if we distribute this cosine x to both terms, we have x cosine x plus cosine squared x minus. And then of course, if we multiply these two together, this is like a plus b times a minus b. And we know that a plus b times a minus b we multiply that out would just be a squared minus b squared. So here, and knowing that this is going to be a squared or just the one minus b squared, and of course our b is our sine function. Okay, and of course. Um, sine x squared is just the same as this. So we can write it in this notation. All right, so moving on. Here we can come and further simplify the numerator. We distribute this understood negative one across both terms. Of course, at this point, um, one of the things that we can see is that we have cosine squared x plus sine squared x, and that is an identity. So that's a Pythagorean identity, um, just written in terms of sine and cosine. So cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So here in knowing that, we would just say x cosine x minus 1, and this and this will give us plus 1. And of course, Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And of course, at this point, um, there's nothing else that we can do here because this is x times cosine x, not x plus cosine x. So um, there's not a common factor in the numerator and denominator. So this is where our answer stops. And of course, um, for our function f of x, this is what its derivative would look like. Okay?